mixture of experts or MOE has kind of been a thing that's come about and it's been kind of, uh, it's kind of become more and more popular for some reason. Well, um, it's kind of become more popular because it, 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 in theory, it should improve accuracy. And because it works in theory, uh, people are trying to make it work in practice. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, mixture of experts or MOE, uh, it's what is usually added to transformers or the attention mechanism uh, or after the attention mechanism. And if you've probably heard about it, if you've... Um, uh, you, you've probably heard about it with transformers and stuff, stuff like that. Uh, it, like I said, in theory, it tends to. You would think it would improve performance. Now, the basic idea of MOE is if I have, say, my, let's have a so works on transformers. So that means you have a sequence of tokens, as shown here. And this may be like word I really like cats. There we go. Yes. Another cat's uh, sentence. Now, what you usually do in transformer is, well, uh, I'll add the norm as well. So maybe you have a pre-norm. So this will go through a normalization. And then you get out your tokens again. And this would go through the attention mechanism. Uh, and you would get out your tokens, um, like so. Your attended tokens. Now, what you usually do is you would throw this through a second layer norm after the attention mechanism. And this would give you your tokens again. And uh, finally, you'll send this through a feed forward layer. So feed forward. And the feed forward layer doesn't do anything with the, the relationships between the tokens. All it does is it transforms each of the tokens independently. So I would send token one through and I would get out um, the transform version of that token. And then I would send token two th through, token three, token four, and so on. And I mean, this is just a matrix multiplication, just a feed forward layer. Maybe it blows it up to some uh, high dimensional space and then to a lower dimensional space, whatever you want to do with this feed forward layer. Now, what mixture of experts does is it says, maybe we can utilize, uh, we, we can make the feed forward layer, we can kind of put more parameters in the feed forward layer and improve, uh, kind of improve accuracy while not really adding too much overhead or or, um, uh, or parameters that uh, actually, I guess, add, yeah, add, add more overhead or add more computation time. So instead, perhaps I have two feed forward layers. And I'll still have the four tokens here. So we have two feed forward layers. And each of these feed forward layers would be called an expert. So this would be expert one. And this would be expert two. Now, what I could do is I could send all the tokens through each feed forward layer. So we would have all the tokens go through every single feed forward layer. And we would get out four tokens for the first feed forward layer. I'm not going to draw the arrows again. Four tokens for the second feed forward layer. And then maybe you combine them in some way or something like that. Uh, the problem with that is you now have two feed forward computations. So instead you do a sparse mixture of experts where you may, maybe you send say this token to the first expert, this token to the second expert, this token to the first expert and this token to the second expert. Then in this case, this would output some transform version of the first token and a transform version of the third token. And this would output a transform version of the second token and a transform version of the, the last token. Now, this way, you have two feed forward layers. So you have double the parameters, but the amount of time it takes to do this computation will be the exact same as it does over here. And maybe the transformations need to be specialized. Now, 
in theory, this this should work where each, it, it, maybe this expert and this expert, they, they specialize in different things and they they transform the tokens in some way. I It's just arbitrary what they may specialize in, but uh, maybe this will help performance or may, maybe this will help um, accuracy in the end. And it, it turns out not really, but the biggest problem with that is that this is a discrete task. How do you choose what tokens go where? And the way you do that is you usually have like some routing mechanism and you do some weird uh, kind of, you do some weird way to make that differentiable. Because if I have four tokens here and I have two experts, I could do what I did above, but that doesn't, that, that won't necessarily mean anything because if I were to swap this token and this token, then this token no longer gets sent to the first expert instead it gets sent to the second expert. So if I swap the first and second token, this is no longer kind of uh, invariant to the, the permutation of the of the tokens, which I guess you you would kind of uh, want want it to be or like you, you you want this token to always go to the first expert because that expert specializes in whatever this word is. That that word was um I I guess. So you would have some routing mechanism to do that, and your routing mechanism says uh, okay token one. Uh, so you have some routing mechanism, and you send it through the routing mechanism, and this is the routing mechanism maybe says okay token one you go here because you're the word I or you're some transform version of the word I. And token two it says you go to the second expert, and so on. So you have this routing mechanism, but the routing mechanism selection process is discrete. And there's a ton of different ways to kind of make this sort of differentiable, but this is a discrete task. And that's the problem with sparse uh, mixture of experts. And like I've been saying, it, it doesn't really work well in practice. The mixture of experts, just um, adding it, it doesn't really do too much in practice um like it doesn't it doesn't it's not as beneficial as one might think it would be now soft mixture of experts is saying what if we make this process differentiable like truly differentiable well in a way that actually makes sense that way you're not doing some backwards way of kind of getting around this discrete process and instead soft mixture of experts says what if we just make this continuous and if you make this a continuous process and you don't do this backwards way of differenti or differentiating through this discrete process, then you may get better results. And it turns out for a soft mixture of experts, they do. And uh, the routing mechanism is uh, it's not too, too complicated. Um, I have some notes over here, but yeah. Let's go through um, how soft mixture of experts work. So the core idea behind mixture of experts is you have these tokens, and you need a router to send the to send the tokens to their corresponding experts. So let's go through how you do this. So the first step, step one, uh, is we need to route the tokens. So let's say we have a matrix of tokens. Let's say this is of shape um, M by D, where M is the number of tokens. So in this case, uh, the number of tokens would be four. Uh, we would have four tokens. And D is our dimensionality, whatever, whatever that may be. Now we do a dot product with a learned matrix. And this matrix is of shape D uh, N by P. And uh, this would have, yeah, so D by N by P. And this is, they call phi. They call this matrix phi. And this matrix is learned. Now, this results in a matrix of shape, it would be M by N by P. And I'll tell you what uh, N by P is. Uh, so N by P is uh, where N, uh, I'll write it up here. M is the number of tokens. Uh, N is the number of experts, and P is the number of slots per expert. Um, and in this case, so if we look at uh, 
what we have up here, m would be equal to 4, n is equal to 2, we have two experts, and p is equal to 2, because uh, each expert takes in two uh, tokens. And that's, um, that's kind of uh, like the number of slots per expert is something that MOE kind of kind of does where you only have a certain number of slots per expert. And so like uh, it's some way of trying to improve mixture of experts, uh, the number of slots. But in this case, um, it's, uh, it's a little different because, um, yeah, so the number of slots is basically how many, like, uh, how many tokens can the expert take in. So in this case, it would take in two tokens for each of the experts. Uh, yeah, so this this is just um, an n by p matrix. So this would be a four. This, this would be a matrix uh, with four um, four uh, four columns, or uh, yeah, four columns. So this would be expert one. This uh, the weights for expert one. And this would be the weights for expert two. And each of these are split into two because we have um, two slots per expert. And this is essentially your routing matrix. This is what we're going to be using to route information. And you can kind of think of this if I um, if I bring it down here. This is um, uh, I'll make it the same, like that. Uh, this is your m by n by p. So if we split this, and this would be four, look like this. Then this is this is your routing matrix and. You can kind of think of this like attention, but it's just it's just a way to route information, uh, which is what attention does. This is just this is just a way we're routing our information. So on the on the left here we have our tokens, and on the top here we have um, this is basically our experts, our experts routing. And you can kind of think of this as our keys and our queries, but our queries are static because we, we had to learn this this transformation. But uh, yeah, in, in a, well, our, 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 yeah, our queries are static. Our queries are this matrix here, and our keys are the input matrix. So in a way, you can kind of think of it like that if you want to try to think of this as attention. But uh, I think it's best to just think of this as a matrix where we have tokens on one axis, experts on the other, and we can do routing with this with this matrix. Uh, now, the first, so after we have our routing matrix, which is just a single matrix multiplication from our inputs, we can then route this information so that we have uh, n by p different tokens. So step two, is we want to route this information. So this is our routing. Uh, this is routing. So the way you do the routing is, so we have this matrix here, and this matrix tells us how we're going to route information. So if we take the softmax of this matrix here, so let me just copy this matrix here. Copy. And we specifically do the softmax over each of the columns. So over each of the experts, basically. So I mean, n by p, just think of that as the number of experts. Don't worry about the slots. Um, I feel like, yeah, just think of it as the number of experts. So basically, we're saying for each of the experts, we're going to do a, we're going to do a softmax over the, over every single input. So over all M input tokens, that would be, I really like cats. So over all those tokens, we're going to do a softmax for each of the experts. And we take our original matrix up here, our X matrix, X, which is M by D, uh, four by D. And we, mo we, do the dot, we do a dot product with that. And this results in a matrix of shape uh, it would be d by n by p, or uh, yeah, d, d by n by p, and they call this x tilde. But uh, the way you can think about this is this first token right here is a linear combination of all tokens here according to this routing 
uh, information right here. So maybe this has a score of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.4. So this would be our softmax for this. And this says, um, so one sec. Uh, yeah, so this says, uh, this, this is your linear combination of, um, of, all, of all of these tokens. So it would be uh, 0 0.4, of uh, this, 0 0.3 of this, 0 0.2 of this token, 0 0.1 of this token. And then you sum all the tokens together, uh, you know, just a dot product with uh, this matrix and this this token here. And that's your routing. Your routing is saying, I want 0 0.4 of this token, 0 0.3 of this token, 0 0.2 of this token, 0 0.1 of the top token. So just a matrix multiplication with the softmax over the, the um, this dimension here. So this is a routing mechanism saying for each expert, so for each of these experts, each of your n by p experts, uh, you're going to have a one token. So each of these experts gets a token, and that token is a linear combination of all the input tokens. So this this token here is a linear combination of all these tokens. This token here is a linear combination of all these tokens, and so on. In this case, we would have four tokens, where this token right here is your uh, token for your first slot of your first expert, this token here. This token is the second slot of your, sec your first expert. This is your first slot of your first expert, or your second expert, and this is the second slot of the second expert. So basically, each of the tokens going into the experts are going to be a linear combination of every token in the, in the input sequence. And you can kind of see that here. So like if we look at, uh, in case of image, in case of an image, you would do a linear combination of every single token in that image. And in this case, we have, I guess, four slots. And you can see this first slot says it wants the majority of like the bill right here. But it, since it's a linear combination of all of them, it still has part of this image, or part, part of this part of the image, and part of this part of the image. And that would kind of uh, be this token here. And then this part, maybe it looks it looks at some other part of the bill, and so on. So that's your routing. That's, that's your dynamic routing that you have. So now that we have this matrix, we're going to send it through all of the experts. Let me copy it down here. So step three is send. Uh, so send your um, send data through experts. So we have this matrix here, which we obtained from step two using our linear co or, or using our routing that we created in step one. And this is our x tilde in case um, you're looking at the no notation. But uh, yeah, this is, our, this is our matrix. Now we have um, expert one and we have expert two. So in this case, we have two experts and we send the information. So we would send the information for each of the experts. So the first two tokens goes to expert one and this the last two tokens go to expert two. And if you have more experts or more slots, then this would change and it would vary. But in this case, we just have two and two. And we concatenate the outputs together. So this would output two tokens, which are some transformed version of the linear combinations of all the input tokens. And then we concatenate them into this output matrix here, which is going to be the same shape. It's going to be D by N by P. And they call this, I think they call this Y tilde. And this is your output matrix for the experts. And each expert is just a matrix multiplication. That's all it is, it's, or a feed forward layer. Maybe that is a linear, uh, linear, and then a silu or a relu, whatever, whatever activation you want. And then another linear, maybe it scales it up to a large dimensionality whatever that may be. But each of these experts is just um, 
uh, a linear or an affine transform that that you apply to the to the input tokens independently of each other. So now that now that we have this information, we have to transform it back to the original shape because notice that our original shape was m by d, uh, but we have a matrix that is n by p by d or however you want to transpose that, it doesn't really matter because uh, if the dimensionality lines up, then that's fine. So this is step three. Now step four is to collect the outputs, basically. Step four is uh, output collection uh, or accumulation. Now, the way we do accumulation is interesting. So we take this matrix here. Remember, this matrix was our routing matrix that we calculated in step one. And we take the exact same matrix, except what you do to it is you do the softmax over this dimension here. So originally, we did it over this dimension, which said each token, each new token, is a linear combination of all the input tokens. So of all the tokens in the sequence, I really like cats. But if we do it over this dimension, then each output token, so this will be a token in our output sequence, this output token will be a linear combination of all experts. So every expert outputted something. And if we do a softmax over this, then the output is going to be a linear combination of all expert outputs. So let me move this over here. And let's get our matrix from the output of the experts. So this is our expert output matrix. Now, if we multiply these together, so we do the softmax of um, softmax of this over the um, over this dimension here. So specifically over the other dimension, over the expert dimension. We do the dot product between those two and you will get out. So if we just look at this first, um, this first part here, the, the uppermost vector in this matrix, then this will output a single vector that is of shape, uh, it would be one by D. And this represents a linear combination of every, of all your expert outputs. So all your all your experts output something, and uh, this token is just it's just a combination of all those expert outputs, and you do this for all m tokens, and this will give you your your output sequence again, and this is the same shape as our input sequence, um, whichever way you want to transpose it, it doesn't matter. So this is your output uh, of your soft mixer, your soft mixture of, of experts. It's, if we go through it one more time, you create the routing matrix using your input and this static quote query matrix, which tells you how you're gonna route your information. You then route your, you then route your tokens based off, you do a soft routing using a softmax um, function, which does a linear combination of all your input tokens and each of those tokens, each of these linear combinations are sent through their corresponding experts, um, depending on what slot they're in. And the outputs, uh, the output of all the experts are then sent through, you then take M linear combinations of those expert outputs to get your output matrix of your feed forward layer. And this is soft mixture of experts. Uh, they have a diagram here, if you're curious. Uh, and this is your input. It's your M by D matrix. You then have this learnable, you then have these learnable parameters, which are your quote queries. These are, this tells you how you're gonna route your, this, this creates your routing matrix. You then create your routing matrix. This is your M by N by P matrix. This is your routing matrix. And first, you route the you route the input tokens. You route these tokens, where this token here is a linear combination of all these tokens, slot linear combination. The second token is a linear combination of all the input tokens, and so on. And this is your D by N by P matrix. 
You then send these through your experts, however many experts you have, and you get out a sequence of the same shape. You then route these to their corresponding output tokens uh, using the routing matrix again, but you do the softmax over the tokens instead of over the uh, or over the experts instead, and this will give you your output matrix. So that is soft mixture of experts. Um, they have code here, uh, unfortunately written in JAX. Um, reset. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to leave that. Keep it there. So they have code here. Um, and we can go through it, but it's just reiterating what they had above. If you get the shapes right, then it should be fine. So you have uh, your input is going to be uh, your X matrix and your, your fee matrix, which uh, this tells you, this this is your input sequence and this is your, this creates your routing matrix. So your logits are, this is your routing matrix before any softmax. And your D is your routing matrix for your initial routing matrix to go from your input sequence to experts. And C is your routing matrix to go from your experts to your um, to your output sequence. So that's D and that's C. Now the second part is you do the you do the routing. So this routes your input sequence to your experts. That's this part here. It does this routing here. Then part three is you do this this thing, which is just sending all your your sending all your tokens through the through their corresponding experts, whatever that may be. Uh, that's this part, and you get these outputs. And finally, you do the dot product with the C matrix, which gives you your outputs. And this is the output. This is your accumulation part where you accumulate all the all the tokens from the the experts into your output matrix. So yeah, there we go. That's that's soft mixture of experts, completely differentiable because you're not routing one token to one expert. You're routing all tokens to every ex you're, you're routing all tokens to the slot, which then goes through the expert. So you're routing all tokens to every expert, um, which makes it completely differentiable, but you're doing it in a, in a soft way, uh, in a quote soft way where uh, you soft max, haha, <laughs> soft, whatever. <laughs> uh, so, they have some properties down here that they that they mention, so yeah, fully differentiable, and uh, this is probably the most important property, as opposed to sparse MOE, which is not differentiable; it's discrete. This is fully differentiable. At the core of all sparse MOE algorithms, there is an assignment problem between token and experts, which is usually subject to some specific capacity and balance constraints. So. They say that nevertheless, virtually all of these approaches are discrete in nature and thus non-differentiable, as opposed to their approach, which is discrete, or it is continuous, so it is differentiable. In contrast, all operations in soft MOE layers are continuous and fully differentiable. So that's one of the biggest properties. Now, another thing with uh, sparse MOE is since you have to choose this routing, maybe some tokens are not going to be chosen, like uh, depending on how you do your routing, maybe a uh, token doesn't get routed, so it ends up being dropped. And uh, yeah, so it ends up being dropped. Or maybe you have experts choosing tokens, and they choose an in they choose an uneven amount of tokens. Maybe a bunch of tokens go to one expert, and that expert really uh, it, it takes a ton of tokens. And this is where slotting comes in. It takes a ton of tokens, and that expert becomes the main expert that does most of the transformation. Now, that's not useful because then that just becomes your original feed forward layer and you don't have the MOE that is supposed to give you better performance. This doesn't have either of those problems, which are the biggest problems in sparse MOE. The classic routing mechanisms mentioned above tend to suffer from issues such as token dropping, i.e. some tokens are not assigned to any expert or expert unbalance. Some experts receive far more tokens than others. 
So obviously they just doesn't run into that because every token is routed to every expert. So it's not going to run into that. So they, they, they claim it's fast, the total number of slots in the main hyperparameter that determines the cost of the soft MOE layer. Um, yeah, because you, so you can do this routing and uh, I think, yes, yeah, so they enumerate over the experts. Yeah, uh, but the number of, uh, the number of slots, so, it depends on how many experts and how many slots you have, but uh, the more, like obviously, the more experts you have and the more slots you have, the more computationally heavy this will be. Um, if you have, say, two slots here, then you would combine those and send those through expert one. But um, I guess the more experts you have, the longer this loop is, which will take longer, and the more uh, slots you have, the lo the the longer the the computation will take for each expert. So. Yeah, those are the main hyperparameters. But if you keep those small, then it you don't run into that problem. They say that the only constraint we must meet is that the number of slots has to be greater than or equal to the number of experts, as each expert must process at least one slot. So, yeah, I mean, you have to at least have one slot per expert. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fast because it's just... Um, it's just a, a few matrix multiplications. You have one matrix multiplication here. You have two matrix multiplications. This is your second matrix multiplication. This is kind of three. So you're doing a matrix multiplication with each of the experts, or I guess a feed forward layer. And this is your fourth, where you're doing the output matrix multiplication. Now, if you only did a feed forward layer, you would only have this part. So it's two extra matrix multiplications, but it could help performance a lot. It could help ac uh, improve accuracy a lot compared to the base while still being as fast as it usually is because it's just two extra matrix multiplications. So yeah, they say it's, they say it's fast. Um, yeah, so features of both sparse and dense. Um, so they say the sparsity and uh, sparse MOE comes from the fact that expert parameters are only applied to a subset of the input tokens. However, soft MOE are not technically sparse, since every slot is a weighted average of all input tokens. Every input token basically activates all the model parameters. Likewise, all output tokens are dependent on all slots and experts. Finally, noticed also, or finally notice all also that soft MOE are not dense, where every expert processes all input tokens, since every expert only processes a subset of the slots. Yeah, so it's not it's not it, it's somewhere this this sparse MOE or the this um soft MOE is not a fully connected layer where like it, it, it's not it's yeah it's it's not fully connected because um it's it, what do they call it it's not uh it's not dense yeah it's not it's not a dense matrix because you're not sending each input token directly through every expert. You're doing it in an indirect way. Uh, and it's not sparse because uh, you don't have the experts selecting a subset of the input token. So it's somewhere in the middle between completely from being sparse and completely dense, which is kind of um, an interesting note. Uh, per sequence determinism. Under capacity constraints, all sparse MOE approaches route tokens in groups of a fixed size and enforce balance within the group. Yeah, so you have to kind of, for, for sparse MOE, you kind of have to encourage the, uh, you kind of have to encourage balance between experts so that it doesn't run into one expert choosing everything. They say, as a consequence, the model is no longer deterministic as a sequence level, but only at the batch level. As some input sequences may affect the final prediction for other inputs. So one problem, another problem with sparse MOE is that it's not completely deterministic at the bat or uh, at the yeah at the uh, sequence level. So that's a problem, and uh, the soft MOE doesn't have that issue. So these 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 are some of the notes that they make that that are kind of interesting. Now they also have some implementation details. So. 
the time complexity is O of M N P D plus N P K. So M is the sequence length, N is the number of experts, P is the number of slots per expert, D is the dimensionality, and K is the token cost of, of each expert. Um, they also say by choosing uh, uh, P is equal to O of M over N slots per expert, i.e. the number of tokens over the number of experts, the cost reduces to O of M squared plus MK, which isn't very, like it's not that expensive. Uh, yeah, and they, they, they make some other notes about the complexity, but it's close to having the complexity of the, the original feed forward layer. It's not, it's not too much more expensive. Uh, normalization. So another important note they make is in transformers, MOE layers are typically used to replace the feed forward layer in each encoder block. Thus, when using pre-norm as the modern transformer architectures, the inputs to the MOE layer are layer normalized. So if I go back up here, you usually have um, a layer norm right here before the feed forward layer. And they say that this causes stability issues when scaling the model dimension D. Since the softmax approaches a one hot vector, D goes to infinity. Uh, thus, in line three of the algorithm, of algorithm one, we replace X and phi with the L2 normalized version of X and phi. Um, and multiplied by a scale value, where the scale is a trained scalar, and L2 normalized normalizes the corresponding axis to have unit L2 norm. So they replace uh, line three in the algorithm. If we go back up to the algorithm, line three is here. So they replace this ein sum by normalizing X and V so that the softmax doesn't run into issues with the normalization. So they do the L2 norm of X and V set so that you don't run into issues with the softmax. And they have a proof down below if you're curious as to why it runs into this issue. And yeah, you can also distribute the models. When the number of experts increase significantly, it is not possible to fit the entire model memory on a single device, especially during training or when using MOEs um, on top of large model backbones. In these cases, we employ a standard technique of distributing the model across many devices. So you can basically put one expert on one device, like uh, on one GPU each or however you want to do it, but you can distribute the, the experts on multiple devices and you can still do that with soft MOE. Nice, so yeah, those are some notes. Those are some implementation details. Now onto the results. How does this actually do? Uh, they have, this is, I'm not, uh, this is a massive paper. It's 42 pages. So um, I'm leaving a lot out, but um, just want to go over the important parts. So they, base, they do this for images. They don't do this for text, which is interesting. I'm curious how this does on text, but for the image, uh, for the VITs that they use, they compare it with dense and other MOE approaches. And you can see that the MOE approaches are very similar to the dense approaches, but the soft MOE approach is way better. And it's the same here. Um, this is the precision. And this is the training time. And you can see that here on ImageNet, 10 this is ImageNet 10 shot accuracy. The accuracy is significantly above the other, the dense uh, version and the other MOE versions. Um, and then a second thing to kind of look at is, uh, so this is the dense version. And as you increase the number of flops, the sparse MOE is significantly, it has a significantly larger uh, accuracy base accuracy and ending accuracy than the dense alternative as you increase the number of flops. So you basically get more you get more uh, accuracy for the number of compute you put into into these models if you just use soft MOE. I guess in this case it reaches a limit, but it still does significantly better. So if you're training a small model, it's still really good for that. Um, in this case, it's a 3% gain from the base model. Um, yeah, so overall, 
just adding soft MOE looks like it does better for images. I don't know about text because they don't do text tabulations. And this here is, uh, yeah. So if we look at this, this is the, um, this is the, yeah. So these are, these are comparable in terms of the number of training days and the number of flops. So th th these were kind of the two I looked at because they were kind of comparable. And you can see that it does do better. The, the bottom is soft MOE and this is dense. And yeah, it does better uh, in all cases. I think in this, I think you want to be lower in this one. Uh, yeah, but it does do better. You, you can see that it does do better than the dense alternatives and all other MOE uh, alternatives that they tested on VITs. Uh, now, finally, the ablations. There's two ablations I kind of want to show, two, two interesting ones, the number of experts and the number of slots per expert. Does this scale? Um, and how many slots are kind of needed? Now, if we look here, we can see that sparse MOE dies as the number of experts increases to a large amount. So blue is soft MOE. Um, orange is expert's choice, and green is token's choice. Those are sparse MOE approaches. And you can see green goes up and then it dies. Orange goes up and then it dies. Blue goes up and it keeps on going up, so the precision increases as the number of experts increases, and it doesn't run into any collapse. Um, I guess this one also shows, and it's a lot more significant, this is the ImageNet. Uh, this is ImageNet, and you can see that it, it goes up and it doesn't really collapse. I'm curious what happens if you keep going up. And this graph is hard to read, but um, uh, as you increase the number of experts, that's how I'm going to look at it. Then it doesn't uh, like it doesn't really run into collapse soft MOE. At least not as much. I don't know. I don't know about this part here. And yeah, this is the, the train step time. So as you increase the number of experts, the train step time doesn't really increase. Like it increases a little bit for soft MOE, but not very much. But as you increase the number of experts for sparse MOE, it increases a lot, the train time. Now, one final thing I just want to show is in the appendix, it's the number of slots. And it doesn't have that much of a difference on the accuracy like it it has a difference but it's not very much if we look here this is one slot per expert and maybe you can get one percent gain if you add 32 experts so it, like it doesn't add that much accuracy uh blue is soft anyway, so but it like if you go to 32 experts you're getting this one percent gain but the number of the step time is it's it's a lot higher, so it may not be worth it to add these experts. And the way they train it, I think they train it with just one expert in the end, and it works, or one slot in the end, and it works well. Uh, while the other well, the sparse MOE approaches do actually increase with the number of expert or with the number of slots per expert. And they have a bunch more results if you want to read through forty two pages of results but there we go that is that is a uh, soft moe i'm I, I am curious how this does on text because uh, i don't think they did any ablations on text but i i'm also curious to see if this actually works really well in practice so we will see